Yo, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and for those of you that didn't know, I used to be really big into Counter-Strike Global Offensive, right, I was really big into the skin scene, uh, the investing scene, like where you can invest in items and see profits or whatever, uh, and, and all the type of stuff like that, and I also really like playing the game a lot. I feel like every year I probably played, I don't know, about 1 to 200 hours of Counter-Strike every year from 2014 until like 2020. Uh, and then in 2020, I made a bunch of big investments. I spent like a few hundred dollars on this game on random things I thought would go up in price. And uh, since then, I haven't really played as much. The last three to four years, I think I've only played about 20 hours of Counter-Strike a year, which is literally like a weekend. Part of that's because they removed my favorite game mode in Counter-Strike, which is Demolition. Uh, I It's Demolition, for those of you who don't know, it's like a... Arms Race is just gun game, and it's like Arms Race, but combined with casual, where basically every round that you got a kill, you would go up to the next weapon, uh, and it was like 10 rounds, so you'd have 10 weapons. But the cool part with, with it was that the weapons got worse. Like, you started with the powerful stuff. You started with the AK-47, you started with the, the AUG and all that, and you made your way to using, like, the P-250 or whatever. Uh, and... I had a really fun time playing that mode, but it's just gone as of Counter-Strike 2. Uh, and Arms Race and Deathmatch are still pretty solid, and every now and then I'll hop in competitive or wingman, but honestly, I don't I don't care to learn smokes and all that and all that you know random stuff. I've always played Counter-Strike very casually. I think the highest rank I've been was actually probably silver, but like inflated back when ranks were a bit more inflated. Uh, but yeah, so I, I just don't play the game as much, and as such, I'm going to be getting rid of my inventory just slowly over the next few months to maybe a year. Uh, and as such, I figured I would make a video kind of snapshot of the peak of my inventory, uh, including the investment skins and the play skins, because I do have a set of skins that I'm probably going to keep forever that I bought specifically to keep forever, because back in 2020, I was like, you know what? I have a lot of money right now. Let me just buy everything I could ever want and just stick with it. So yeah, uh, first off, I'm going to go over those skins in the little equip menus, which I'm not 100% sure how to use. Uh, but yeah, on the CT side, we have the Agent D Squadron Officer Enzas or whatever. Uh, looking at all the, the things at the time for Agents, this one was like $4 and it looked really nice and clean. So I bought it and now it's like... 40 to 50 dollars which is insane but uh i didn't buy this as an investment i bought this just to use this could have went down to five cents and i'd be keeping it but i'm still keeping it i, I like how it looks i think it looks great glove wise i have uh some emerald hydra gloves that are like beyond battle scar they're in really really poor condition but they look solid enough in game and i'm happy with them i got them really cheap back in the day i think i got them for like 30 or 40 bucks from somewhere i don't remember I think they've went up a little since then, but not much. Uh, but yeah, I just don't care too much about glows, but these ones uh, work well with my operators and look nice in game. Then uh, knife-wise, I used to have a bunch of knives. I used to have some karambits, some M9 bayonets and all that. And then I kind of realized when I played the game, I almost never saw my knives. Uh, and I, you know, for like the several hundred dollars they were worth, I didn't really like that. So I sold them off, and I've been using the default knives ever since, but as you'll notice here, they're renamed to something special, where there was there was some type of, like, exploit or whatever you could use at the time, uh, where you could rename stuff really weird ways, and I used that to rename these so that their name is really long vertically, like this. Uh, both the T and CT, they're slightly different names. I think the, the one on the left and the CT, I fucked it up. It's supposed to say Sizzle on both of them, but you can see there's no S on this one. But yeah, uh, this is just a kind of a neat thing to have. And also, it's pretty cool because in-game, uh, for most people, your weapons are in the bottom right. When I play Counter-Strike, they're in like the middle of my screen because of these knives. Because that's how the game renders them, which is pretty cool, actually. I'm, I'm a big fan of having that. And if I ever want them in the corner, I can just swap back to the stock knife and there's you know, no questions asked. So yeah, pretty cool stuff in my opinion to have. Uh, Zeus-wise, I don't have any skins because back when I played, there was no Zeus skins, so I didn't you know, buy any. Music kit-wise, I guess I have the Valve CSGO one just because I had the game. But uh, the main one I had was the Three Clicks Philip one, uh, which... Yeah, I like that guy's videos, and he actually has a very solid music kit, in my opinion. Like, the music fits the game well. I generally have music off, so I don't really hear it often, but whenever I do, 
I'm reminded, like, these are actually pretty good. I feel like he has some tracks that really, really fit the game well. And uh, when I bought this, he got a little kickback from it, as, at least as far as I understand it, which is also great. It's like an indirect donation of the guy. Uh, I love that guy's videos. I, I don't really play Counter-Strike much these days, but I still watch every single Three Clicks Philip video. As for coins, here's the random coins I've gotten over time. Main ones of note are Stockholm Diamond and Diamond Riptide. They're kind of whatever. Uh, graffiti wise, I have no graffiti. I have never used graffiti. Uh, an item that is temporary that you can sell for money on the market. I don't know why you'd ever use that in game. Uh, the only time I've ever used graffiti is back during Stockholm 2021, like during this major. If you had the coin, you could pick a random team spray to use uh, during the major or whatever. So that's the only time I ever used the graffiti feature, and I used that for like the month it was available. But that's because that was free and you couldn't sell that or anything. If you could sell it at all, I never used it. I would just sell it on the Steam Mark or whatever. As for weapons, uh, this is like the weapons loadout I currently have, as you can see right here. There's like a quick look of everything. But instead of looking at through that, I'm going to do this. And now I can see all the weapons equipable for CT. Uh, so first off, I guess we're starting with the Deagle. I'm just going to hold this up till later because there's another deagle. I still have my uh, cheaper deagle that I used to use before I got a print stream, which is this trigger discipline. I think it looks really nice. It looks way, way better in game as well. Uh, it's like a random field tested one. This was like a dollar, uh, but it was really nice. I don't know if it's still a dollar, but if it still is, it, it's a solid looking deagle skin, but the print stream is just a better looking deagle skin. This one's like a bit more expensive. <laughs> I don't know the price of this stuff nowadays. I haven't really looked. But this was expensive back when I bought it. I'd imagine it's a little bit more expensive now because it's just so damn sexy. A very, very nice deagle skin. Uh, mine's minimum weight. It's not even factory new, but it just looks so good in-game. And I have an M4A4, which I pretty much never use, which has some random stickers on it that kind of look solid. This one was also pretty cheap. It just looks really nice and clean. And the import I actually do use is the M4A1S Blood Tiger here. No particularly crazy wear or anything, just minimum wear. The crazy part with this skin is the stickers on it, uh, not the Vertigo ones. I put those on all my skins pretty much, or at least I tried to back in the day. I might scrape those off, honestly, because they look kind of shit. <laughs> and I think nowadays you can actually play stickers wherever you want instead of just set positions, which is pretty nice. But yeah, uh, this sticker looks really bad, but I have it on like every skin, so I had to put it on this skin. The main stickers uh, here, though, is the Katowice 2014 paper sticker, and this one, I think, was worth like $200 back in the day, and then the King on the Field sticker there in the back corner, and that one, back when I got this, was worth like $1,000, uh, and it's probably went up from there, because the thing with this sticker is it was removed from like for copyright or something. So only the ones that were already in the game were kept in the game, so it had like a limited supply. And as far as I understand it, this game has only continued to get more popular. This is probably worth a little bit more than when I bought it. <laughs> uh, then I have the Scout Detour. This one's got a funky name as well. Uh, this name used to work that you could have a crosshair while uh, not scoped in. Because if you didn't know with any of the snipers, when you're not scoped in, you have no crosshair. But with this funky name and like the right settings in game, it would actually push this little plus sign to the middle of your screen to work as a crosshair, which is pretty cool. Doesn't work anymore, I think, but it's also not super intrusive anymore. Uh, and yeah, that's that's like a cool story behind the name. But behind the actual skin itself, uh, I like the detour. It's my favorite scout skin in the game, unless I'm forgetting one. Uh, at least affordable scout skin in the game. Back when I bought it, uh, it's got an Olaf Meister signature on it that came with it, uh, which I got because it's part of the Overpass collection. And the Olaf Meister Olaf boost on Overpass is one of the most infamous CS clips, at least for me. That one will live in my heart forever, where basically a pro player called Olaf Meister uh, had like an exploit where he could look over the entire map in like a major that they showed off. It was super, super hype back in the day. I think they had to like redo the match because of it or something. I don't remember, but it was it was really hype. It was it was such a cool thing to see. But uh yeah, so that's that's my scout skin. Uh five seven wise, we have this five seven Akami. Not particularly special on the front, the stickers are kind of random, but you never really see that part of the weapon. What you do see is the back. And I spent a bit of extra money and time searching this one out to have this little V face on the back. Only this pattern, only uh, you know, 
pattern template 537 has this little v-face on the back it looks really nice in game and i love it i didn't even spend too much extra getting this i think it's actually worth a good amount more because after i bought this like i remember seeing a few months afterward uh some of the bigger content creators like people like onapixel started caring about patterns on the 570 comic so that probably went up a little bit as well and the CZ Auto Tigris, just the best looking CZ skin in my opinion. Never really use it because I never really use the CZ. Uh, the R8, I have the R8 Revolver Junkyard. And this one's got a Vertigo on both sides. This one I might not remove the Vertigo sticker on because it actually works really well in the barrel there. But yeah, just a simple looking skin. Nice little banana sticker on the back. Just decent looking all around. Uh, MP9 Food Chain, just a nice looking skin. I guess I should probably show up the floats on these, but they're not particularly special either way. Here's the float on the uh, CZ, and then here's the float on the R8. Uh, then we have the SCAR20 Blueprint. This one, decent float, but really, really good skin. This is one of the better skins in the game, but it's on a weapon that like I never use, and no one ever really has a reason to use, so you never really see it ever. Uh, then the M249, I have the Impact Drill equipped. This is just one of the cleanest looking skins of all in all of Counter-Strike. It's really cheap. It's a gray skin. So that was an easy pickup. Uh, then the P90 Shallow Grave looks really dope. Uh, looks better without the Vertigo stick there. I'm probably going to scrape that off now that I've kind of looked at these skins for more than a second. Then the Dulbretta Grill Consort is just a really nice looking Dulbretta skins all around. Uh, here's the float on those as well, and I guess I should probably be showing the floats off more on these. I keep forgetting about that. Um, but yeah. Then we got the Mag 7 Justice, which I have field tested, and it's just kind of alright, kind of whatever. It's decent. Then the Souvenir USPS Road Rash here is one of my favorite skins that I own. It wasn't too expensive, I think it was like 15 bucks back when I got it, uh, and it's like field test or whatever. But it just looks really, really nice in my opinion. Like a little winged bullet in the front just looks amazing. And I even purposely scratched this PGL sticker myself, uh, which I think actually looks way better. It scratched like twice or something to have like a little bit of scruff around the edges. And I think that just made the skin look substantially better. I remember doing that like little scratch and feeling proud of myself for it because it just looks nice. Then the op I have is the op Aetherius with a liquid fire thing on the scope. It came with it, didn't have to pay extra for it, and now that sticker is worth a good amount, and it just looks so damn sexy. Looks great in game. Uh, then Nova wise, I have the Nova Candy Apple. This is my favorite Nova skin, looks really clean. This Nova specifically, at some point, I'm gonna get this replaced because I don't like these stickers on it. Uh, but I also never spent any time to look for a sticker craft for it. So that's the only reason I still have this one. If I ever find a better sticker craft, this is one of the few play skins that I have that will be replaced. Uh, that I know of. Yeah. And we have the MP7 Gunsmoke. This was a pretty cheap, great looking MP7 I got. Uh, FAMAS Survivor Z came with these stickers on it. I think the stickers actually add to it pretty well. It just looks really good all around. Uh, very bloody scratch skin then we have the aug arctic wolf the insanely clean aug skin this one doesn't even have any stickers on it because they looked so bad that i didn't put any on it uh then the pp bison high ruler one of my favorite skins in all of csgo i think these navi glitter stickers or whatever ended up looking really nice on it um but i never really used this weapon unfortunately because it's just bad so i have no reason to use it and I guess here's also the ways and the other ones but yeah Kind of unfortunate, that's just how it be. Uh, then UMP, I have the UMP Roadblock. Got it factory new at a .01, it's a pretty good float. But yeah, this little like arrow thing looks better in game than it does in the inspect thing here. And the skin as a whole looks better in game with a lot of different lighting, or at least in Counter-Strike Go it used to. I don't know how it looks in CS2. Like I said, I haven't played much CS2, so I don't really know. Uh, then we have the Souvenir P250 Drought. This was like three cents and had nice stickers and stuff, so why not? Uh, the Negev Nuclear Waves here. This one's pretty special as well. I have this one because of the stickers, right? The ESL, Fnatic, and NIP. Uh, first off, I watched the stuff that this was a part of, right? The ESL 2015 Catawis. I didn't buy this in 2015. I bought this in like 2020. It was pretty cheap, it was in the Gev skin, who cares? 
Uh, but I bought this because there was two identical Negevs, pretty much. Uh, the wear's, like, a little bit different on this one, obviously. It wasn't the exact same wear. But they were both aware of, like, 0 0.16 and both the exact same sticker placement. And the skin itself looked really nice as well. So I got this and another skin that was like it. Gave the other skin to a friend of mine at the time. I haven't talked to that person in a while now, but they probably still have this skin. Uh, and we just basically had matching to give skins, which was pretty cool. It was, it was a very neat thing to have, and I'm probably keeping that forever, even if the other person might not have. Uh, then Souvenir, I just have a lab rat. I never use a uh, Souvenir. Sorry. <laughs> the, the MP5, uh, I pretty much never use this. Got a point zero zero six float, which is kind of neat. That's like pretty low, I think. But yeah, uh, I don't really ever use that weapon. And the same way they never use the P2000 turf. I get a random field tested turf that has a Kingwin sticker on it, which as a team that used to play Counter-Strike, it's pretty neat logo and all that. Uh, then I also have this XM 101 for Seasons, which has a special pattern on it, where uh, if you didn't know, the Seasons has a few special patterns where there's a blue leaf that shows up on the skin. Uh, and there's multiple variants of the thing with the blue leaf on it. Not that many of them get a blue leaf, but there's a few variants. And I picked out this one. I thought it looked the most vibrant, looked the most nice. Uh, yeah, a nice, nice blue to black fade. Also factory new, which is an added bonus. Uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all there was to talk about on the CT side. Now I'm going to go off to the T side. So first off, I'm going to go over uh, the agents. I own Number K and Getaway Sally. I bought these back when they were like 10, 20 bucks a piece, and they're like crazy expensive now and apparently only going to go up. I don't know why or how, but yeah, uh, I like them. I think the, the gloves and all that and the general look of the operators just look super clean. So I just have both of them just in case I ever want to use both of them. Uh, I also renamed the bomb uh, Boom Shakalaka, which was pretty funny back in the day. You used to have to like go like type in some console commands to be able to do this. And now you can just like right click and rename this or something. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure that they used to require an exploit. Now it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, but, or not an exploit. It was. It was. This one was the the knife thing was a, a bit weird and required a lot of weird stuff to happen. But the and and it got patched out, I think. But the bomb thing was like tied to console commands. You just had to like enable stock bomb to show up in your inventory, or whatever. It was. It was very simple. But yeah, we named that one. Uh, same stuff there. As for weapons, we got obviously some T sided weapons specifically. These two Tech 9 Red Quartzes, I might have these leave my inventory. I actually hate every time that I load the game and I accidentally look at these. These were both like failed like $90 trade ups, and these are worth like three cents a piece. Uh, they were attempts at the Deagle Blaze, both 8% attempts, and I got the worst roll on both times, which I'm still kind of sad about. Uh, I'd prefer <laughs> not to ever think or talk about that ever again. But yeah, uh, all the stuff in the front here random drops. Then we have the Tech 9 Bamboozle. Uh, I personally like the look of the skin a lot. The stickers are alright on it as well. And I guess I should probably show up the flute while I'm at it. Minimum wear. There you go. Uh, I have this Sod uh, Galil Signal. Not particularly crazy float or anything, but just a very nice looking skin overall. The AK uses the AK Nightwish. It's got this cool little hollow effect on the main part of the gun. And I, I oftentimes will just be inspecting this skin as I'm walking around just to be able to see it. Not sure why I like it as much as I do, but I do. We have the Sawed Off Spirit Board. Just a decent looking Sawed Off skin. I actually do pull it out from time to time because it's just such a funny weapon to use in this game. And I do play very casually. We have the G3SG High Seas. Probably the best skin ever added to Counter-Strike. It's unfortunate that the best skin of all time is tied to... One of the least used weapons of all time, at least for me personally, I never use this thing. But damn if it doesn't look good. Like, you can't really see the front on it either, but it, it's, it's like a telescope. It's really fucking sick. Uh, I got a factory new one. It's it's just clean. It's just really, really clean. Uh, speaking of really, really clean, this Glock craft. Uh, I didn't craft this myself. It came as is. I bought a nice factory new Glock candy apple. Big fan of the candy apple on any skin, but... Damn, dude, these stickers in-game, they don't look so great in here, but that, like, red to green gradient on the hollow stickers here, you see that in-game so, so clearly. It's insane. This is one of the best graphs I've ever seen, and I'm lucky that I own it. 
Uh, then we also have the SG553 Darkwing, just cleanish SG553 skin. Don't really ever use that weapon either. And uh, yeah, that's it for all the main loadout type skins. Those are all the skins I plan on keeping forever, uh, pretty much. Unless some crazy, nice, new, and very cheap, most importantly. I'm not spending a lot of money in this game ever again, I don't think. It's just, I don't like it as much as I used to. Maybe if I like it more, I'll do that again, but... Yeah, this, these inventories on both these guys is what I'm probably going to keep forever. And, uh, that's, that's that for the, the base skins. Now we have the investments, probably the part that a lot of you are a little bit more interested in. And I'm going to start it kind of easy, go over the stuff that's not as valuable, and then make it into the big investments, which aren't actually as interesting as you might think. First off, the graffitis. These are random graffitis that have been dropped over time. I just threw them in a storage container because I had an extra one for whatever reason. I don't remember why, but yeah. Those are all worth, at least they used to be worth like three cents. I'm assuming they still are. Uh, next up, we have this thing on the left here. It's a randomly named thing. I don't know what that text means, if it's something offensive, my bad. But yeah. Uh, we got a bunch of random skins that I've either owned or gotten as drops over time. Uh, mainly just owned. So, like, this is before I got my big, big loadout. This Souvenir G3 is pretty special in particular, because it's got a DreamHack 2013 Hollow on it, which is pretty sick. It's in the top right here. Uh, also, you know, having five sticker slots is pretty neat. And the skin itself doesn't look completely awful. So, yeah. Uh, that one, that's a pretty neat thing to own. I'm probably keeping that forever. This 5-7 monkey business I had because of this little foil sticker on it. Forgot what team that is, but you know they don't exist anymore. So that I have that I guess. I'm probably gonna sell that eventually. I used to own I used to use these you know, this Glock uh, and Mac 10 Nuclear Guard, and these used to be my play skins. This sticker here was self-applied. Kind of a waste looking back at it, but <laughs> you know it is what it is. Uh, speaking of self-applied, this MP9 Hypnotic was self-applied. This was my very own craft. I unboxed this. Uh, it sold for like 50 cents on the market. So I'm like, instead of selling it for 50 cents, let me just make a craft with it. And this was the MP9 I used for a long, long time. And I might use it again in the future, to be honest. Like, it's actually a pretty solid looking craft. And speaking of solid crafts, this AK uh, came like this. It had all four of these stickers on it. But this is one of the better crafts I've ever seen. It's such like a bad basic skin normally, but these these stickers make it look so much better than it is. Uh, I also have this op, which had a special pattern on it. Uh, it's factory new and had a special pattern where this golden cat was like dead center like that. Which exactly where you wanted them. Uh, I used to be really big into patterns and stuff, but that wasn't as obvious. Uh, I've owned this one for a bit. I don't really think I care about that one. This souvenir walnut though. I remember someone just gave this to me. Like, I said, hey, like, your fucking shotgun looks sick. And he's like, you want it? I'm like, sure. And he just sent this to me for free. So this one might not ever be my inventory either. I don't even remember who sent me this. It was some random person in a random match. It was one of the weirdest interactions I've ever had. And I might be keeping it just because of that. Because <laughs> that is, that is weird. Uh, this Nevermore has a really good pattern on it, and a very, very good wear. Point zero zero five Factory New, Stat Track, I, you notice I never really used it. That's because I don't like Stat Track weapons, I don't like having my stats kind of public for everyone to see like that, uh, especially because I play this so casually. So, I, you'll notice none of my stuff is Stat Track in both uh, in Counter-Strike and in TF2, I have no strangers, because it's the same type of principle. But yeah, uh, that's a pretty neat thing. And the rest of this is just random stuff I used to own over time. Uh, but yeah, off to the kind of more investy type of stuff. Those are the basics, and now we're off to the investments. So first off, the stickers. These are technically an investment. I just didn't really have a need to apply any of this stuff. Some of this stuff is self-unboxed, like the Heroic and Astralis stickers there. Uh, I have a lot of... Uh, Kill Counts, Deadeye, and Liquid Fire hollows that I got. Because back when Riptide came out, I unboxed a bunch of these just for fun. And I kind of held on to them ever since. I got a bunch of random web stuck ones. I still don't remember why I bought like 50 of these, but now I own 50 of them. And I got a few other stickers here. Just like random stickers I've come across. Tai Lu, I think, used to be worth a lot or something. I wonder if they still are now. I have no idea. 
Uh, but yeah, I just had these randomly. Like these weren't particular investments. I just got them over time for one reason or another. Uh, next up, we have cases. And uh, yeah, some 2023 cases and like a Dream of Nightmare case uh, just kind of held. I bought a few of these when they came out. I sold a few older ones like the 2022 uh, Antwerp Capsules here. And I used that to buy some 2023 ones. But yeah, it's got a bunch of 2022 Antwerp Capsules in here. We got a few hundred of those. Uh, we got a, this randomly named thing that's 222 items. And it's 222 Stockholm 2021 Capsules. I bought a bunch of those back when they came out. All of these were not bought like after the events these were bought when they were 25 cents so anything above 25 cents these are worth is value that i've gained uh, and then the good skins thing here with 863 items is not actually skins it's just stockholm 2021 items because that's where most of my investment was it was in stockholm 2021 i bought a bunch of everything just because i had a lot of money and i knew that these items would retain a good amount of value going forward and i was kind of right on that some of these capsules are worth like three four dollars a piece and i bought them for 25 cents these patch packs ended up being worth a lot more than i thought they would but luckily for me i bought quite a few of them i might actually keep holding those for a little bit longer as well because i think they stopped doing these or something at least I remember hearing that randomly. So those are pretty cool. And yeah, uh, that's all my investments. You probably expect a lot more from the investment portion of this video. But that's that's all there is. It's just like hundreds of 2021, 2022, 2023 capsules. Because uh, that's that's free money right there. And I guess I have this extra recoil case that was dropped here or whatever. But yeah, uh, that's that's everything. That's all the skins uh, at the peak of my Counter-Strike inventory. This is the most it'll ever be worth. I think this is actually worth either a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. I don't actually know the value. I haven't calculated the value of all this together. If someone wants to, feel free in the comments. I'd actually be interested if you want to maybe like put this all together somehow <laughs> and comment below what all this random stuff is worth. I'd be really thankful for that. I'll pin the comment uh, if I see it. And I say that because, you know, maybe in, you, you write that comment four years from now and then I'm not going to see it, maybe. If you write this, like, as this is coming out, I'll probably see it right away and pin it right away. Be kind of interested in know my inventory is worth. I have actually no idea. Uh, but it's not going to stay this big for long. This is going to be the peak of my Counter-Strike inventory. And luckily, I have footage of it and kind of proof that it happened. Hopefully, none of this stuff goes up too much in the future. Like, if I, if I in 2020 five or 2027 or whatever check back in and these like three dollar capsules are worth like eight dollars i'm gonna be very sad but like at least i'll have the footage of it <laughs> but yeah i uh, hope y'all enjoyed that let me know in the comments if you found any of it interesting or you got any of your own stories to share about cs skins or investments you've made and with that being said i'll see you in the next one have a great rest of your day